This is the vertical T-joint TIG welding multi-pass 3F position. I'm comparing freehanding to walking the cup in this video, so for the first half of the weld, I'll be doing the passes freehanding, propping with a TIG finger, and in the second half, I'll be walking the cup. This is a fairly common joint to do when you're in welding school, and it's kind of trying to prepare you for pipe and socket welds and things like that. I'll be at 140 amps throughout. Oftentimes you'd be using a scratch start for a socket weld or a pipe weld, but I'm using a foot pedal and I'll just be pressing it all the way and I'll be at 140 amps with a number six gas lens at 15 to 20 CFH argon flow. I'll freehand the first half. Here's the first pass. I'll be propping right next to that weld with a TIG finger. I'm not using a whole lot of motion right here and I'm using the lay wire technique. That just means I'm leaving the wire in the puddle I'm using 332 diameter ER70S2 for the whole joint. I've done some comparison videos between S2 and S6 on fillet welds, and for that application I don't notice a tremendous amount of difference between the two. For open roots, I do prefer the ER70S6 to the S2. I'm keeping a nice tight arc and just moving it up nice and slow, progressing nice and slow, keeping that rod in the puddle, keeping just a little bit of pressure on the rod so that it doesn't come out of the puddle. All right, now walk the cup for this second half. I don't really differentiate between wiggling and walking the cup. This technically, I suppose you'd say is wiggling because you're not walking it like you would a 55 gallon drum across the shop floor like you have to do on a cap on a pipe. But it's all walking the cup to me. On a fillet weld like this, you just select a cup size that lets you lean the, lean the cup back a little bit, lets it wiggle from wall to wall, and as you wiggle it, it breaks surface tension and moves the, moves the arc forward. It's a really good technique when you can do it. It's really suited better for pipe and socket welds because they're round, so it's kind of hard to start on the very end of something walking the cup. That's why I started freehanding on the first half. Even though this is a T-joint, and it's a simple practice joint that you might do in school, it is almost the same technique, almost the same skill as you would use for the first pass on a socket weld. But let's take a really quick look at it again, that first pass, just wiggling that cup, wiggling along, bearing down on the tip of that wire, leaving it in the puddle. Now let's take a look at the first pass on a socket weld, using also a number six cup, large diameter gas lens this time, but I'm also using 140 amps here. I'm using the same exact technique. It's just round instead of flat. So for students, it makes sense to have them do a T-joint or two or maybe a couple lap joints in quarter inch thickness and just get the hang of what it feels like to walk the cup on a fillet weld going vertical uphill. All right, we're gonna do the second pass now. Same thing, same drill. First half, propping with a TIG finger freehand technique. Still lay wire, still 140 amps, still using 332 ER70S2. Now here I'm just weaving just wide enough, pausing momentarily on the toes of the weld, just trying not to leave any undercut behind. It bears mentioning that you kind of want to let this thing cool between passes. If you get it too hot, if you just keep going from start to finish, don't let it cool at all between passes, it can get so hot and so oxidized that it's very easy to get undercut on the toes of the weld and the metal just doesn't flow like it should so you gotta be patient you gotta let it cool alright let's switch over to walking the cup for that second half I'm holding the torch kinda upside down that just seemed comfortable to me you'll see me hold it in kinda different ways throughout this joint sideways upside down like this whatever feels right A couple of benefits to walking the cup one you don't have to prop so you don't, you're not worried about a TIG finger or how hot the metal gets. Another is that the electrode gets pointed into the toes of the weld. It changes angles as you wiggle it up that joint. I like to walk the cup. I do it when I can. There's just sometimes you can't do it. Stuff is in the way. The area is too tight and you just have to freehand. And when you have to freehand, it's helpful to be able to prop right next to the weld without your fingers smoking. Just like I mentioned before on the first pass, this second pass is very similar to the second pass 
on a socket weld on how that would go in. Let's take a quick look at that real quickly. We'll do a little quick review and, and look at how this looks on a T-joint and then compare it to the second pass on a two-inch socket weld. Not too different. 140 amps on both joints. I'm using a number six cup and 140 amps on both joints. Now let's do the third pass. On a heavy wall socket weld, you might have to do several passes just like this. So now I'm stacking. And usually when you stack beads on a fillet weld, you don't want to just overlap the previous bead exactly halfway. You want to go about two-thirds. Or maybe even sometimes just a, a little bit more than two-thirds. The reason for that is if you just go halfway, if you center up on the toe of the weld, you'll oftentimes have some low valleys and low places. So here you can see I'm going overlapping that previous bead by a good two-thirds. I'm pausing momentarily on that left-hand toe to avoid on undercut. And I also let the joint cool a little bit between that last pass and now so that it doesn't overheat and oxidize too much. So now I switch over to walking the cup and this time I'm going to hold it kind of sideways like this. This is a rigid head torch so I can't just bend it and hold it straight up and down so I have to hold the torch sideways. You have to do that on structural type fillet welds like this if you're going to walk the cup. On pipe a rigid head torch is not such a big deal. The pipe is round and the handle doesn't get in the way but when the handle gets in the way you got to hold it sideways or upside down. Not a big deal just just an observation just something to get used to. Okay that is the third pass and we need to let it cool for a few minutes before putting that final pass on there. So after letting it cool for several minutes, good wire brushing, it's time to put that final pass on there. Same drill, I'll be doing the first half propping with a TIG finger. And you can kind of catch a little glimpse on that red hot glowing area right there. I couldn't prop next to that without a TIG finger on. This time I'm really paying close attention to that right hand toe of the weld, the one that's fusing into the base metal. The left hand on the on the weld side usually takes care of itself. I'm really eyeballing that toe of the weld on the right hand side. I'm freehanding here again and I'm not I'm not sweating it. Fingers not hot at all. I'm using the TIG finger to my advantage. But now it's time to switch over and we'll walk the cup for the rest of it. And since I'm comfortable here, holding it upside down again seems to be the most comfortable way for me to do the rest of it. So that's what I'm going to do. Same thing goes on here. Whether you're walking the cup or freehanding, you need to really keep an eye on that toe of the weld that's fusing into the base metal side. And pause for just about a half a second. Not long at all, but just keep an eye on it to make sure you're just not bouncing off that toe and leaving just a little, little bit of undercut. If, you, if your joint overheats or if you slip or hold a long arc, it's easy to leave just a little bit of undercut. You don't want to do that. Whether you're doing a practice joint in welding school or taking a welding test, do yourself a favor and weld all your coupons end to end. Weld them all the way to the very end. Don't stop a half inch short. Even if they tell you they're not going to count the last half inch, Weld them all the way to the end. Good practice. Well, my goal was for you to not be able to tell too much difference in the free hand versus the walk the cup half. So there's not too much difference there. We need to cut an edge. I like to test welds. I know that if you were watching that root go in, you're probably like me and you're kind of wondering, did that really get in there? That's the reason I do cross-section testing, also called macro etch testing or cut and etch testing. After polishing, I put a little acid etch on there. And we can look at it. And let's correlate what that arc looks like right where I cut it, the freehand side, keeping a nice tight arc, bearing down on that thing, and it got into the root like we wanted it to. If you'd like to learn more about TIG fingers or TIG cups or TIG welding machines or TIG torches or any of the things used in this video, my online store is at weldmonger.com. That's how I pay for these videos. Quality welding gear with plenty of videos showing you how to use it.